so we'll be um, starting with chapter 3 supply and demand it's a very basic chapter very simple chapter for those who have already taken economics in maybe college or uh, in your school you might have studied supply and demand so somewhat similar only we'll study uh, some of the things are different or maybe some of the definitions are different or maybe some of the topics are a little different but all in all uh, majorly it's similar to what you have done before right but the only difference here in cb2 is that uh, there might be some conceptual differences so it's very important that we study according to what cb2 syllabus is right because we want to obviously clear our exam in a particular pattern and even if you're appearing from iei or ifa they look for these keywords which are important and which they are referring to in their material all right so let's start firstly we'll quickly go through some important words which we should know before starting supply and demand today i'll be first starting with demand and then uh, maybe we'll be covering half a portion of supply and then in the next class we'll complete this particular thing all right so there are words like price taker you don't have to write anything just listen to this carefully price taker who is a price taker a price taker is a firm who actually uh, does not decide on the price of the goods which he or she sells on its own they are the price taker they depend the price at which they sell their goods depend on the market right so they cannot influence they cannot influence the market price that person is known as a price taker right there is someone who is known as a price maker so someone who will who can influence the price at which the goods or service are being sold in the market and these two the differences we'll be studying these two differences in the later classes when we will we'll be studying different forms of market right then obviously starting with the very important uh, terminology law of demand what is law of demand so law of demand says now there are again very important jargons or very important words which we have to keep in mind so law of demand is the change in the quantity demanded what is quantity demanded the amount or the quantity you demand in a given period of time so given period of time is always very important because we are talking maybe for a very short duration or maybe for a given period of time we are not talking about something which is flowing concept or maybe it's over a period of time no it's a given period of time right so law of demand is quantity of good what is quantity of good the amount of good that you are demanding now when i say demand the word demand now the word demand has two things two aspects one is want or need plus the willingness to pay for example as i said the human wants are unlimited right the human wants are unlimited now my demand my needs my wants my wants generally it's always the wants my wants are unlimited or maybe i, I want something maybe i want a uh, my own charter plane for example but do i have that power or the willingness to pay no i don't have that purchasing power to purchase a charter flight maybe right so in such a case it's not called a demand a demand consists of your want plus your purchasing power your purchasing power to pay for that particular want that is known as your demand together is known as your demand right now quantity demanded for example how much do you want a particular good how much are you willing to pay for a particular good at a particular given period of time that is your quantity demanded so law of demand says that what is the amount of good right the quantity of good over a given period of time so basically we denote quantity demanded as qd all right so we say in the law of demand that the quantity demanded for a good over a given period of time will decrease or will fall as the price of the particular good increases very simple obviously if the price increases it's a very general notion that the demand for that particular good will decrease your willingness might decrease willingness to pay 
might decrease or your want might decrease right similarly vice versa the quantity demanded will increase over a given period of time when the price decreases so when a price of a particular for example during sale so we'll be discussing why uh, no, what are the reasons uh, that there are sales there are different types of sales there are different types of prices we'll do it's a very interesting concept that we'll do in the later classes right so this is law of demand now the law of demand can actually be explained using two methods so first is your two effects first is your income effect first is your income effect and next is your substitution effect right now when i say now when i say just give me one second all right so there are two ways in which we can explain the law of demand first is the income effect now let us understand these are very important terminologies and very important concepts so basically when i say income effect income effect is for example if i am saying that the price of a particular good let us suppose good x is increasing so if the price is increasing my purchasing power will decrease how for example if your income is 100 rupees right and a particular good is priced at 10 rupees if this price now increases to 12 you will now feel poorer as with respect to the increased price if my income remains same right and there is a word which we generally use is ceteris paribus ceteris paribus basically this means that everything remains constant if i am if i am saying in the law of demand that the quantity demanded changes the change in the price of that good ceteris paribus which means everything else remaining constant what is everything else all the other factors remaining constant so here when i am saying that the income is 100 rupees and if the price is increasing from 10 to 12 then you might feel poorer because your income is same this is known as your so basically your purchasing power what is purchasing power how much can you purchase with given income given price how much can you purchase that is your purchasing power now whose purchasing power will be more my or ambani's obviously ambani right so their purchasing power will be more than mine so now when the price increases my purchasing power decreases i feel poorer it's a it's an emotion when i say poorer it's not literally you you are you have become poor no it's an emotion it's an emotive word that yes you feel poorer and so now you will demand less you will buy less this is known as the income effect right what do we say purchasing power purchasing power decreases clear what is substitution effect so before starting substitution effect there are few important words which you have to consider let us say um alternative goods or we call it as substitutes substitutes now what are these substitutes these substitutes are if for example something which you can buy alternatively for example you are searching for different lipsticks all right now there are different alternatives you can buy from a sugar brand or you can buy from mac or you can buy so these are alternatives right these are different substitutes for example milk uh, and generally tea and coffee are called as substitutes so if if the price of tea 
leaves increases the demand for coffee increases that we'll come to it later on but th these are known as substitutes or alternatives you can buy either of them so in substitution effect what happens if the price of one commodity let's say suppose good x increases then what will happen that you will substitute the other good you will consume this particular good less and you will buy the alternative good instead you will buy the alternative good instead this is known as substitution effect so the law of demand is explained using income effect and substitution effect right this is very 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 important because later on we'll be presenting this graphically as well clear the uh, income effect and the um, substitution effect all right now uh, so basically people switch there is a word switch to alternative goods people switch to alternative goods now let us start and now uh, so we have learnt about substitute goods there are also something called as complements or complementary goods for example when i say that tea and sugar or tea and bread milk or bread these are complements these are consumed together right these are consumed together we'll something we'll talk about later on moving ahead left left sock and right sock socks right left and right socks you cannot just wear the left socks or you cannot just wear the although it's in fashion that people are wearing two different types of socks that's a different issue but you cannot just wear left socks you cannot just wear right sock right so these are complements these are perfect complements which we'll do later on so these are complement goods which we consume together now there are two other demarcations as, as well normal goods and something called as inferior goods what are normal goods these are goods whose quantity demanded increases as your income increases for example i have one car let's suppose now if my income is increasing it's increasing a lot i will buy one more car so this is a normal good we also call it as a luxury in india cars are considered as luxury in india so your income increases your quantity for that particular good increases demanded increases now there are something called as inferior goods what are inferior goods inferior goods is it's opposite if your income now there is a difference between income and price please do not confuse yourselves income is my total income which i am earning price is the price of a particular value of a particular good right so if my income increases my quantity demanded for an inferior good will re reduce why it will reduce because it's considered to be inferior for example generally earlier we used to consider ragi uh, or maybe jaw jowar right these as inferior goods now because of its health benefits we now not consider it as an inferior good earlier like maybe 6 7 8 years ago these goods were considered as inferior goods because these goods were consumed by poor section right some staple goods so these were considered as inferior so if my income is increasing i will consume better products right so in this case these products are if your income is increasing the quantity demanded the quantity demanded for these goods will fall if your income is increasing these are known as inferior goods but one thing which you have to keep in mind for both of these goods both of these goods if your price is increasing quantity demanded will quantity demanded will fall so this you have to keep in mind is this clear normal good inferior good right now let's move to now let's move to demand curve right so if i am constructing a demand curve on the y axis i have price on the x axis i have quantity demanded or we generally write this as q right what do i say that if your price is increasing your quantity demanded will fall so it looks something like this either you can make a straight line or you can make a curve this this curve is called as d which is demand curve clear clear this is the demand curve now in your compiler you will see that there are three demand curves which are made for example if i am making three demand curves here 
so this is my demand curve this is my another demand curve so basically here price quantity demanded price quantity demanded so here basically this good suppose this quantity demanded the first one is for consumer a this is for consumer b and this is for consumer a and b together or you call it as market demand curve what is a market demand curve a market demand curve is the horizontal summation so for example let me just quickly give you example over here if i am saying that a good is priced at 5 when it is priced at 5 consumer a consumer a will consume this particular line consumer a will consume at this particular quantity maybe 10 so similarly if it is priced at similarly if it is priced at 5 consumer b will consume 6 units of that good so in total in the market in total in the market same good priced at 5 will be how many quantities will be sold 16 so this is known as a demand curve what is a demand curve a demand curve tells you that at what price what quantity is demanded by a particular consumer these two the first two curves are the individual demand curves of an individual decision making unit individual consumer this is a market demand curve which is a horizontal summation by horizontal summation what are we doing 10 plus 6 so it's a horizontal summation that we are doing of all the individual demand curves at a particular price 5 clear the price is not changing obviously in the market the price will not change right if i am considering market demand curve so i will say that in the market if a particular price if a particular good is priced at 5 my total quantity consumed will be how much clear if i construct a schedule quickly if i construct a schedule so i will say price let's say suppose we are saying rupees rupees per kg right and 20 40 60 80 here i am also writing a is demand b is demand and the market demand clear so now maybe a is demand is 28 15 5 1 what will be b is demand here 16 11 9 7 so you can just do the horizontal summation 44 26 14 and 8 clear which is a horizontal so basically in the market if a particular good is priced at 60 how much will be quantity demanded 14 clear this is known as a demand schedule when you construct a schedule and always remember to mention the price unit if it's in rupees if it's in pounds and the quantity price per kg clear here also it's important that you mention in kgs all the three clear this is known as a demand schedule and one more thing which is important is your period of time so i will say demand for good x and bracket monthly so now i know my my period of time is what month month clear unit quantity and period of time that is very very important why are we taking yes so i will come to this uh, now piyush i was actually going to come to this point just give me one second all right now what are we saying is that what are we saying is that the price of a particular good the price of a particular good changes if the price changes the quantity demanded will change so here price is independent variable here my price is an independent variable yes or no and what is dependent on price quantity demanded right this is my demand curve so here 
price is the independent variable independent variable and quantity demanded is the dependent variable clear but still we are plotting price on the y axis and quantity demanded on the x axis we always plot the here we have y here we have x right so we call this as the dependent variable and this as the independent here we are plotting it other way round why are we doing this this is a very general convention that we follow across everywhere in the world we plot y, price on the y axis we plot quantity demanded on the x axis as now if you all know if you all remember what was the linear equation what is a linear equation of a line what is a linear equation of a line y equal to a plus mx where m is the slope a is the intercept right what is intercept for example if you set x equal to 0 your y will be a so this is known as intercept so basically i am saying that if x the value of x is 0 then what will be the value of y a that is our intercept what is a slope suppose if your y x changes by one unit this uh, delta sign or this triangle sign is known as a change symbol if x changes by one unit how much unit will y change with that is your m which is the slope for example y equal to a plus m into 2 right now here if i am changing this by 3 i am increasing it by one unit then your y will also change so your y will change by how much m clear clear so that is your slope now here when we write when we write the demand equation when we write the demand equation how should we write the demand equation what is my independent variable price is my independent variable so quantity demanded equal to a plus b p p is your independent variable in place of x and y is your dependent now this is now piyush is asking a very good question so why are we plotting price on y axis this is this is because this is because it's a very general convention that we always plot price on the y axis and quantity demanded on the x axis and now why now let us now let us understand this demand equation first so here we have here we have a as the intercept means that if your price is set at 0 what will be your quantity demanded a what will be your quantity demanded a so generally if i am saying that your curve might look something like this if it's a linear curve might look something like this let me construct it price e demanded it will look something like this right and if price is set as zero your quantity demanded will be a clear this is a is a this point is a and if your price changes by one unit how much will be the change in your quantity demanded b clear so now what do we say that a is your uh, intercept and b is your so now if uh, if nothing changes if only a changes for example so your curve will shift and that we'll talk later on first let us explain first let us understand the demand equation so that is the reason why why are we plotting the independent variable on the y axis it's a very general convention that we follow p all right it's a general convention that we follow we fo we make the price on the y axis and quantity demanded on the x axis clear but always remember price is your independent variable and that is why we are writing the equation like this another thing why have i written here minus because if your price because if your price correct if your price will increase 
your quantity demanded will fall the change will be negative and so that is why minus b because it will change by how much minus b sure or if your price falls your quantity demanded will increase so if your price is falling so if your price is falling over here your price is falling so there is the change in the price is negative negative plus negative positive the change in the quantity demanded will be positive is this clear is this clear to everyone so a is the slope uh, a is the intercept hardik a is the intercept meaning if your price is zero how much will you demand clear and b is your slope of the equation what is the slope if your price changes by what amount your quantity demanded will change clear clear hardik now there are a few determinants there are a few determinants of price so this was our demand equation very important now there are a few determinants of price that we have to keep in mind what are these determinants of demand determinants of demand so other than sub, the very first thing is price that if your price changes your quantity demanded will change now other than this price there are some other determinants as well what are these other determinants meaning what are these other determinants that will change or other factors that will change which will lead to a change in the quantity demanded of a particular good keeping price as constant ceteris paribus so here the very first thing is the price of substitute goods price of substitute goods for example if i say that the price of tea increases so now if i am consuming tea i will consider tea as expensive and coffee as cheaper so now i will buy coffee instead so here what i am saying is if the price of tea tea is for tea so if your price for tea increases your quantity demanded for coffee will increase clear clear we'll come to that um hardik so next is your price of complementary goods price of complementary goods now what is complement complementary goods for example price of milk is increasing then or maybe let me say not milk let me say butter or bread if the price of bread is increasing we eat bread and butter right so your quantity demanded for butter will fall clear because these are consumed together tea and sugar tea leaves and sugar if your price for tea leaves increases for example petrol car if petrol and diesel prices are increasing your quantity demanded for cars will decrease a very common scenario which is happening currently clear clear next what are the other determinants tea and sugar yeah what are the other determinants the very very important difference between me and mukesh ambani my income consumer income so if his if if i say my income is decreasing or if it's increasing then my quantity demanded will change not if other things are same other things are constant if my income is changing my quantity demanded will change what are the other things very very important in today's world taste and preferences taste and preferences consumer taste and preferences so if for example even if something which is expensive for example iphone is expensive but my taste is that i will have to buy apple product i have to buy iphone right that is my taste so i will buy an iphone even if people are buying those foldable phones samsung phones so even that is more expensive than iphone that is more expensive than iphone but my taste and preference is that i will buy apple product so uh, that depends on taste and preference very good what is the next thing now these are other these were these four are the basic uh top four determinants now other determinants can be distribution of income for in, for example us 
the distribution is in in income is not that it's is actually great if you see there are some very wealthy people some very wealthy people and large amount of not so rich people so distribution of income in there also the distribution of income is very important that depends that determines um j uh, so j is saying taste and preferences will come under the income concept no how will it come under the income concept for example for example i gave you an example of samsung right for example my friend is earning maybe less than me but his preferences are to buy apple products only so he will buy apple product maybe his income is but i am buying a cheaper phone let's say suppose phone of 20000 10000 so it depends on your taste and preference right does not depend that if your if you are actually wealthy if your income is high your test taste and preferences will also be very high that does not it's not correlated right so it's different and one more very important concept is your future expectations future expectations when i say future expectations of price nothing else price future expectations of price for example if i say that uh, diwali dhamaka is coming and i will i will be able to buy iphone at a cheaper price so my quantity demanded for iphone or my quant or my willingness to buy iphone now will decrease because i know the price will fall in coming 2 3 months that is your future expectations all these concepts are clear yes or no <clears throat> okay now now because of these because of these changes in other determinants and the change in your most importantly price there are some changes to your demand curve as well clear there are some changes to your demand curve as well so for example so let me just quickly give good examples over here this is my demand curve d1 price quantity demanded right now here here and this is price p1 this is quantity demanded q1 what is a demand curve a demand curve gives you the point where what for what price what quantity will be demanded clear now here d1 is actually the current demand curve of a particular person let let's say suppose person a whose income is at a particular level now a has been working very nicely and he has got a raise in a, in his income in his salary so his income is increasing if his income is increasing he will be able to buy this particular product no more of the same product at the same price clear this person for example let me take this good as cars give me an example what will you buy more if you are earning more what very good very good clothes i think this is the best example and it is coming from a boy not from a girl so okay d1 is the demand curve current demand curve so if i am earning let's say suppose 50000 now if i am earning 70000 i will buy lots i will do lots of shopping so my demand and the price is not changing at the same price only i will be able to buy more of the good so in this case your demand curve will shift your demand curve will shift to the right this is known as shift of demand curve shift of shift is the keyword of demand curve meaning you are able to buy more of a particular good at the given price clear for example my i am not performing very good in my job and my salary decreases from 50 to 40000 i will be able to buy less of clothes so it will shift leftwards this is known known as shifting rightwards otherwise it will shift leftwards right another example 
price again this is again this is p1 right demand curve again let me take same thing clothes so for example now this is the price p1 this is the price p1 and the quantity i am demanding is q1 now if the price of this particular cloth increases i will be able to buy less of this particular good so if your price is increasing it is moving upwards p2 i will be able to buy less of this particular good quantity demanded will fall this is known as movement along a demand curve this is known as movement along a demand curve movement can be upwards or it can be downwards if your price is decreasing i will buy clear so there is so one more thing one more thing this is also known as the first curve which you saw is known as change in demand this is known as change in quantity demanded because here your quantity demanded is changing when your price is changing and in first case your price is remaining constant constant your demand curve is shifting although the quantity demanded is only changing but we call it as change in demand because the demand curve is changing so the equation for the demand curve will change correct so the equation for the demand curve will change now the equation of demand curve this is a little deeper now my e uh, equation for demand curve is what right quantity demanded equal to a minus b p clear so if my equation of the demand curve is changing either a or b these two things are changing any of these two that will depend we'll discuss this later when we'll talk about elasticity clear so any of these two can change either a can change or b or both can change 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 of a is basically at when the price was zero your a is changing generally your taste and preferences may be towards that particular good is increasing your a is increasing and b is the change in the quantity demanded if your p is is this clear to everyone till here everything is clear change in demand change so change in quantity demanded happens only when there is a change in price and here change in demand happens where the other determinants any of one of the other determinant changes ceteris paribus meaning keeping everything else as same or constant now with this one more last concept that we'll have to study over here when we have talked about so much of uh, taste and preferences over here or, or different determinants basically so now let me construct let me construct a new demand equation a new better demand equation qd let me first write it down dp all right now see this here a and bp this is the same as the earlier equation price is basically the price of our own good if price increases quantity demanded falls that is why we have a minus sign over here now ps stands for price of a substitute so if my price of the substitute increases price of the t increases quantity demanded for for my own good which is coffee will increase so that is why we have a plus sign over here plus c there will be a positive change in my quantity demanded if price of t decreases my quantity demanded will fall same change so that is why we have a positive sign here we have a negative here we have a negative sign this is price of a complementary good if price of bread is increasing price of butter quantity demanded of butter will fall so there will be a negative effect or if it decreases it will increase clear is this demand so that is why we are this demand equation is this clear clear to everyone any doubt till here any doubt till here Thanks. 
so basically so basically see what happens for example i'm talking about quantity demanded of coffee all right here i am saying this is the price of coffee this is the price of coffee so if my price of coffee increases obviously my quantity demanded will fall that is why negative clear is this clear then we have price of substitute which is basically price of tea so if price of tea is increasing my quantity demanded will increase so basically this is also known as cross price demand we'll, which we will be doing when we'll be doing cross price elasticity so you are talking about price of tea only but the quantity demand is this for our own good which is coffee so it depends what is your own good own good over here is what coffee we are talking about coffee we are dealing with coffee only but we are considering what will be the impact on the change in the quantity demanded of coffee if your price of anything else maybe tea is changing tea is a substitute if price of tea is increasing quantity demanded for coffee will increase and here price of complementary good let's say suppose tea uh, coffee and sugar milk those who are not having black coffee considering so if your price for coffee if your price for milk increases your quantity demanded for coffee will decrease hence negative inverse relation clear clear okay so c and d are again the slope so when i am saying when i i was saying that price here when i was saying that this price is changing by how much your quantity demanded will change that is b so here when i am saying your price of substitute is changing by how much your quantity demanded for coffee will change see now quickly if you are asking actually i was supposed to explain this later but quickly if you are asking this question qd equal to a plus bp now let me differentiate i hope all of you all know differentiation sorry minus if i differentiate with this with respect to p differentiating both sides with respect to p this will give me what so and what is this d d basically is the change right or we can represent this using this triangle so basically what i am saying if your price is changing dp is the change in the price what is change in the price earlier suppose price was 10 rupees p1 now the price has changed to 12 rupees p2 so this is the change in the price what is the change in the price over here p2 minus p1 this is dp which is 2 is this clear so also denoted using change in price clear so if your price is changing your quantity demanded will also change by how much minus b by minus because if this is increasing this will fall so so basically here actually i was supposed to explain this later on q1 q2 uh, let me keep this as 5 let me keep it as 3 or let me keep it as 2 clear so here what will be so earlier when the price was 10 my quantity demanded was 5 here when my price was 12 my now quantity demanded is 2 so what is the change in quantity demanded 2 minus 5 minus 3 q 2 minus q 1 minus 3 so minus 3 divided by 2 will give me how much so this is my b and that is why minus because or if it's a positive change so might be here you are writing something positive and here negative positive so again we will give you minus because it's always opposite is it clear is it clear so please just take out 2 minutes 
and just go through the entire thing i'll be starting with then uh, supply just take 2 minutes time go through this take a 2 minutes break and then we'll start with supply okay so uh, firstly what is supply so supply is from the side, just like demand is from the consumers side supply is from the side of the producer or the firm right so what do we say again in the supply quantity supplied is the amount of a particular good a particular firm is willing to sell at a particular price in a given period of time here in a given period of time so that is your supply or quantity of a particular good supplied quantity supplied clear now here again we'll study supply curve and everything before that again a few important terminologies that we have to see over here is substitutes in supply it's a little different than what we did in demand substitutes in supply is that for example uh, i'll just take a very good example over here i have a shop um where i am selling ice creams right i i i am selling other things as well i am selling a ice cream so i have a small ice box something kind of a thing now here i can only sell ice cream of one brand if i am selling ice creams from amul so i cannot sell ice creams from quality walls i can only sell it of one particular brand so these two are substitutes in supply if you are selling if you are diverting your resources to a particular good you cannot supply the other one clear substitutes in supply so if there are two goods for example if you are increasing production of one good or you, if you are supplying one good so basically you are diverting or directing resources for to this particular good so you will have to reduce your supply for other commodity or other good clear substitutes in supply right i have a shop i am only selling potatoes if i want to sell carrots i will have to remove all potatoes then only i can sell or maybe some part of it so if you are if you want to increase supply of one good you will have to decrease supply of other right or if you are producing one good you will have to reduce the production of other that is your substitutes in supply next is your goods in joint supply goods in joint supply what is goods in joint supply this basically means that production of one good leads to production of the other good as well for example if you have uh, maybe in class 8 i think we used to teach uh, production of petroleum so when you when you start the production and when you get the final petrol in between you also get some by products for example diesel is a by product so if i increase my production of petrol the other by products that is your diesel or something like that that will also increase so these are known as goods in joint supply so it's opposite to that of substitutes in supply basically meaning that if your production of one good increases the production of other good will also increase clear if production of one good increases production of other good will also increase now let us understand the relationship between the price of a particular good and the quantity supplied so as we had law of demand we will have law of supply so here what law of supply says that if price of a particular good increases the quantity supplied of the particular good will also increase in a given period of time now as we had for law of demand law of demand we have income effect and substitution effect here also we have two reasons to this particular ideology that if your price is increasing what is the idea behind your increase in the quantity supplied as well i am writing qs for quantity supplied what is the ideology so there are two ideologies you might differ see 
these were some economists who had framed law of demand law of supply right so if you have some differentiation with what they said earlier you can write your own theories no problem you can write your own law that is why we have so many economists different theories. because all of them might have some different ideologies right so now there were two reasons to this what are the two reasons the very first reason is that as your quantity supplied increases the cost of producing or selling these goods after a certain point it increases for example if i am selling 10 units now if i want to sell 15 units it will cost higher i have to increase my space something like that i have to increase more laborers so my cost will increase so if your cost is increasing you will have to increase price also so that you can bear this cost and you can bear the increase in the quantity supplied as well so this is one ideology that if your price is increasing then you are able to cover the cost of selling higher quantity of goods so your quantity supplied is also increased clear is this clear the second ideology is very very simple that if your price is increasing your profitability this pi is generally denoted as profitability your later on this will be denoted as inflation so don't confuse your i mention it as profit so if your profit is increase uh, if your price is increasing obviously your profitability the good will become more profitable and you will be selling it and you will be selling it more your Here and here we can also talk about substitutes and supply. S price of quality walls ice cream is increasing, so I will be selling that more because that will give me more profitability. I will reduce the supply for Amul. Clear? There are two ideologies why law of demand, law of supply acts in a this particular manner. Now in the there there is a concept for short run long run that we'll do as we'll move ahead. But here, as we know that price increases, quantity supply also increases. Now, if your quantity to supply is increasing, let's now study the supply curve and the supply schedule as we did for the demand curve. First, let me make the schedule price again. I can say rupee per kg. Rupees per kg, twenty. Eighty, and I have. Let me say farmer. X. X is supply again in kgs. So the farmer X is supplying seven fifty, seventy, hundred, hundred twenty. So as your price is increasing, the farmer is supplying more, producing more, supplying more. Farmer. Buy. Again in kgs, so we may have twenty, thirty, forty. So what will be the market supply? What will be the market supply? Seventy, hundred, hundred forty, hundred eighty. As your price is increasing, again market supply is the horizontal summation. of all by horizontal summation you are summing over these horizontal summation of all the quantity supplied of individual suppliers or producers and how do you construct a supply curve again a supply curve gives you relationship between the price of a good and the quantity supplied of a particular good so this is the price and this is the quantity this is the quantity supplied of the also call it as q and now this is this is thing function now why do we make an increasing curve because if your price is currently over here p1 you are supplying at q1 if your price is increasing you will be supplying more p2 and that's why it's an in Curve. Here now again, Piyush had asked why we plot price on the y-axis. It's a general notion. See, to answer this question, actually, you have many different answers. If you just search for this, 
even this was one of the questions which came to my mind also when i was doing when i started this particular chapter so i think generally uh, the first person who might have plotted this particular schedule might have plotted price on x y and quantity on x considering that quantity supplied is the independent variable might be this is one of the reasons you might get somewhere or uh, they thought that plotting price on the y axis will give you a better uh, relationship between supply and demand when we'll be studying both of them together so there are many multiple reasons for this and that is the reason you will say that economics a little different it makes it this a little different than what we study in general maths right so again price on the y axis quantity supplied on the x axis and it's a positive sign that we get supply curve is this clear is this clear now with this we also have just like in uh, demand we studied different determinants other determinants of supply we have other determinants of supply what are these other determinants so here the very first determinant can be cost of production cop cost of production if your cost of production increases for example it can be my input prices are increasing i am producing cloth price of cotton is increasing for example change in technology and now uh, some of some i think someone mentioned about the scarcity of raw material if there is a scarcity of raw material my price for that raw material will increase clear clear so it will become the cost will increase the cost of production will increase clear if your cost of production will increase if your cost of production will increase what will happen quantity supplied falls considering price is constant here we follow again the concept of ceteris paribus other things remaining same if your cost of production increases your quantity supplied will decrease clear because price is same price is same my cost of technology there is a huge change in technology and my current technology is actually costing me way higher or maybe the new technology which i'll have to actually purchase is costing me higher right government policies so you can have multiple uh, examples under cost of production the next the next is again uh, profitability of alternative goods or goods in substitute goods basically so or substitutes in supply what we did earlier so we have done this if my cost if my profit profitability in selling quality walls is higher i will decrease the sell, uh, supply of amul right so if or this is also known as substitute so if this profitability increases my quantity supplied of my own good will decrease clear clear again with this we have profitability of goods in joint supply goods in joint supply so if my goods in joint supply if their profitability increases for example profitability in producing petrol increases i will produce more of diesel as well because it will automatically be produced so quantity supplied will increase of my good considering my good is diesel over here clear clear right then we have then there are multiple determinants actually we have maybe the aim of the supplier or the producer so their aim is maybe uh, to you know maximize profit sales maximization so if my aim is to maximize sales i will increase the volume of sales no matter what the price is right again it will also very important is your expectation of future price so if my expectation is that price in the future so i'll write f over here price in or let me of f let me write e if my price expectation in future is that it will increase my quantity supplied now will fall because i know that in future my price after one month the price of this particular building will increase so why will i sell it now i will sell it after a month clear quantity supplied will increase uh, what else number of suppliers number of 
suppliers. So if I say a number of suppliers in a particular uh, industry is increasing, whatever the price is, your your supply will increase. Sure. Um, and there are then many other determinants like random shocks. If there is a random shock, there is a random decrease, sudden decrease in the resources of a particular good, supply will decrease. Sure. So these are the different determinants of right, uh, supply, which changes the quantity supplied when your price and other things are constant or same. Here, here. Now we'll move to the next part, which is again. So here, if I have here, I had made my this is price, this is quantity supplied, and for example, this is S zero. Current supply curve. This is my current supply curve. Now, if there is a increase in the cost of production. So here, basically, this is the current price P1, Q0. Here, so I am saying that at P0, I am selling Q0 goods. Now, if there is an increase in the cost of production, so my production becomes expensive. Clear, I will sell less at the same price. So I will sell maybe Q1 at the same price. And so basically what is happening is your supply curve is shifting to the left. This is known as what? Shift in supply curve. Or we also call it as change in supply. This happens when any determinant other than price changes. Clear? Clear? Similarly, if the cost of production is decreasing, I will supply more at the current price, so it will shift to the right. Then we have, then we have Let's say suppose this is again my supply curve. This is again my supply curve. And now I am saying that this is my price. P0, Q0 is what I am selling right now. Now if I say that the price of this good increases. Price of this good increases. If price increases, it becomes more profitable, I will sell more or there were two reasons or the cost of production also increases as I increase my quantity. But since the price is also increasing, so I will be ready to sell of the same product which is Q1. So basically what happens when I'm moving from Q0 to Q1, if I'm producing suppose additional four units, then in order to produce this additional four units, it will cost me something. So in order to, you know, overcome this cost, increase in cost, I have to increase my price as well. So, I will increase my price and I will be ready to sell more. Here, this is an upward what? Movement. Movement across a supply curve or if we call it as change in, in quantity supplied. Here, is this clear? Demand is not a determinant of supply. When we talk about supply, we talk about it independently of demand. So this is a very important logic that we have to understand that whenever we are talking about demand, it should be independent of supply. Whenever we are talking about supply, it should be independent of demand. And then when we are talking about two of it together, then only we will relate it. So here, when we move ahead, when we move to macroeconomics, that there also it's very important that you understand that whenever we are talking about something, it should be independently of other things. That is why we say change in price, ceteris paribus. Change in this particular thing, ceteris paribus. Right, Jay? So we never mix the two things. So you can actually mix the two things. If price is increasing, supply will increase. If price is increasing, demand will fall. 
but if supply is increasing a lot at some point the demand will also increase so those relationships that we talk about is not in a given time period it's a over a particular time period right it's not in a given that is why we say given time period clear this concept all right okay so now once we have done about the shift in the demand curve shift in the supply curve sorry this happens because of other determinants other than price and so here price was not changing in your first curve the price was not changing other than price something else is changing keeping other things constant and here in this case price is changing keeping other things as constant now we'll talk about the supply equation quickly supply equation so just like price equation we have supply equation and we say that the quantity supplied and we say that the uh, quantity supplied is dependent on what price and here here we have a plus b by because if your price is increasing your quantity supplied will increase so there will be a positive change if this is decreasing this will also fall so we did this earlier did this earlier for demand dqs by dp if dp is positive change in price is positive meaning price is increasing p2 minus p1 this will be positive is p if p2 is higher right similarly q2 minus q1 this will also be positive because q2 will also increase this is increase it will give me a positive a is the intercept and b is the slope clear any doubt any doubt now we can also relate quantity supplied to other uh, things that we have over here a b p c a b just any variables i'm taking over here now again this is my own good this is my own good this is the price of my own good if price increases quantity supplied increase that is why it's a positive if a is what a is the profitability of the substitute goods quality walls price increases i will sell more of amul sorry i will sell less of amul if price of profitability of quality walls increases i will sell quality walls less of amul less of my own good similarly this is what this is j is joint goods so if my profitability in petrol increases i will produce more of petrol and this in turn will lead to more of diesel here is this clear is this clear the entire uh, supply equation right okay so now uh, we'll be starting with the price and output determination that is we'll understand the uh, interaction between the two but that we'll start in our next class that we'll start in our next class is this fine clear any doubt till here any doubt all right so just revise this particular portion for the next class and then we'll start with the determination of price and supply together all right thank you